it's Monday, and for some reason today feels like a doing day. I had some errands I was going to go out and run, but it's tipping it down, and it's going to be like it all day, so I can't be bothered. I made an executive decision this morning. One of the problems with it being winter is getting your washing dry. It takes about three days to get things dry in the winter, so you have to strategically plan when things need washing, when you think they'll be ready to wear again, particularly when it's the stuff that I wear for cleaning. So uh, I need to make sure that I have enough days in between cleans. And I'll wear something more than once anyway. I'm not one of these people that has to put everything in the wash after it's been worn once. But I had to make an executive decision and I've put my warm thermally winter layers into the wash. So my big green snoody hooded thing has gone into the wash and the green um, fluffy trousers that I wear with it have gone into the wash because they really need a wash now. They're also really synthetic layers so it's the sort of thing that will probably dry quite quickly. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that as we've got a couple of warmish days or a few warmish days that I can manage without those layers to keep me warm I'll just put other layers on I'll go back to my dressing gown for a couple of days and hopefully I can get this stuff dry it's whirring around in the washing machine at the moment so we'll see how we get on <clears throat> and I've also stripped the bed today so I've put some of that in with it because you have to make the most of your full load of washing It's really dark today. I've got a light on. It is so dark outside. It makes indoors like I woke up only just before the alarm went off and it was so dark. And that's because we've got really, really heavy cloud cover even though it's not that cold. But it's absolutely tipping it down. And I think it's going to be like this all week. So indoor jobs as much as possible this week. I need to cut my fringe, I think. It's just reached that point of being annoying. So that's a that's a today job. I've also got one thing to make. I took all the scraps from that chintzy dress I made and I've braided it all up, I'm going to sew it into one of my uh, coasters, my giant coasters that I make, so that I can put that into my shop. So, that's a today job. Stay in my hair, yeah, I really need to cut my fringe. Let's make that the next job I do. I'm gonna go off and do that now. Hair's done. Washing is done, and I've had to put my dressing gown on. It's too cold to just even just have a couple of layers on. I don't know what it is today. I think it's probably about 11 degrees, something like that. Um, end of the month, and I want to do an end of month financial roundup. Now, it's I've decided not to do everything. I've already done the food one separately, and I've just decided to talk about the things that are different because the first five months of the year, as I've said before, are really expensive. I have all sorts of things going in and out. I have uh, different bills are changing. Um, and so certain things are different this month going forward. So the first thing is I had an updated water bill through. I don't know why they've done it in January. Normally I get my water meter read in April and October, but for some reason it's coming through in January. Last year I was paying £13.15 a month for my water because I'm on a water meter, so I can control that to some extent by using less water. And I've had my new update through and it's gone up to £14.10 per month. Now I get read every six months so 
that may well change and I would imagine that's probably gone up because of all that washing I was doing for the vintage stuff so hopefully if I'm careful over the next six months um, that will go down again it's always very incremental because I say it's only extra £15 a year so that may well change over the course of the year uh, I've also this month had to pay my national insurance because I'm self-employed so I pay through self-assessment that is £163.80 this year I know that the national insurance is changing in um, in April in the new tax year but that doesn't help me because I have to pay by January other things, uh, my first YouTube payment came through on time, so I'm going to be paid roughly around the 24th of the month, and my income, so they pay for the, the previous month, so the money I've been paid for on the 24th of January was December's earnings, effectively, and that came to £147.11, so that's a good new income stream. Um, I've also got the first of my new pension payments going out. Over Christmas when I was down at my parents I made it my main task to sort out a private pension and I've gone for a, a stake a managed stakeholder pension. I don't want to be doing self-managed, I don't understand how it works so I've left it with them to do. Now I'm not going to be putting in tons and tons of money into this I don't have the money. This first month um, I've because I had to set up the thing, the whole thing on paper and stick it through the post I opted to start up with a direct debit and I put in a nominal amount of £240 a month once that first payment's gone through I can register online and I can just self-manage the whole thing online so I can change the direct debits now I'm self-employed so this is like a self-employed stakeholder uh, private pension I'm also not a taxpayer at the moment, um, but that doesn't mean I miss out on the tax relief from the government. So although I can still get it, it's at a lower rate. So I can get um, I can get tax relief, 20% tax relief, on up to three thousand six hundred pounds. So that means the £240 nominal monthly payment that I've put in as a direct debit is actually £192 and then the tax relief gets added. So my understanding is that if I effectively uh, put in 3600 a year, 20% of that is paid in tax relief by the government. So once I'm up online, what I really want to do is get that 3600 limit paid up for this tax year because we're getting close to the end of the tax year and then in April when the new tax year starts I want to put in the full amount for the next tax year so that'll, that means I've put in two years worth of pension payments up to that limit by the middle of April or thereabouts and then I need to strategically think about the savings that I have left I've already set aside um, six months and a bit more of emergency savings. I put that aside in a high interest easy access account um, so I know that I'm covered for six months worth of bills plus there's a little bit extra in there. So once once that's sorted I can then look at what's left because you never know when you're going to need the money. The thing is putting in six months worth of emergency bills is fine but let's say something happens to my car my car is already 12 years old let's say something happens to my car and I need to get a new car um, I'm very unlikely to get a loan I'm very unlikely to get um, high purchase um, that's how I bought my last car because I don't qualify for you know if I can't qualify for rent payments and I have to pay for all of that up front I'm probably going to have to pay for a car up front so I need to think about how much of the savings that I have left um, which are coming out of fixed bonds the rest during the course of this year how much I want to lock away and how much I need to keep out if I had a regular income I would allocate certain amounts but for now although last year my income was better than the year before and this year I expect it to be better 
because I'm running so many side hustles, I'm kind of protected by that because I'm not reliant on one employer. I need to be very strategic about where I lock away my money, and where I can't get access. So I need to think about that. Um, the only other thing that I really need to talk about is my car insurance. Okay, I'm doing this last bit a couple of days later because um, I had to, to wait for some money to clear in my credit card before I could buy my car insurance. The process this year for car insurance renewal has been an absolute nightmare. So I had the renewal quote through from my current provider, which was eShore, and they had put my renewal quote up £152 higher than last year, which is an absolute joke. There's absolutely no reason for it. And it's really confusing as well, because on their renewal information, it says about how uh, they offer the best quotes. And then it says that if you've been with us for a while, you might find you can get somewhere cheaper. And yet it also says uh, loyalty to renewing customers. So I don't know what any of that was about because that's a lot of old rubbish if ever I saw it. And I tried to contact the renewals team it's really interesting how I've noticed a lot of websites are removing their phone numbers. So for the renewal, I couldn't call anybody. I could only use web chat. And they were not interested. It was like, nope, you renew or you cancel. They weren't interested in the fact that the next cheapest quote I'd found was also with eShore. They didn't care. So I cancelled the renewal for my insurance and I had a look on some of the price comparison sites and I found the that's where I'd found the renewal quote through again for eShore and it was um, something like um, 311 pounds compared to 390 something so I thought I'll have that so I, I did what they say on uh, what Martin Lewis says and then other people say there's a sweet point at which you should check your insurance renewal and the prices change so I checked I think I think one of them was like 23 days before it was due and the other one was 14 days and they were all giving back so I was using money supermarket because that's the one that uses through the money saving expert site and that was what it was giving me and then I left it and left it and left it um, because really annoyingly my insurance is due on the second of the month and my credit card bill is um, has to be paid on the first so I was really hoping that if I bought it at the end of the month then that payment won't have rolled through until um, what will be my end of February bill I'm not sure if that's if that's going to be the case I need to have a look tonight and see because sometimes payments go through really, really slowly and other times they're really fast so we'll see what happens anyway so money supermarket and I left it and left it and left it and then so it's two days before my insurance is due which is um, so it's today when I'm recording this is the 31st of January my insurance will run out tomorrow at midnight 1st of February so I go back into money supermarket and all my quotes have dropped. They're a lot cheaper. And now there's one with eShore Flex. I don't know what the difference is. But it's £289. Brilliant. The link doesn't work to the website. So I try to compare the market. Link doesn't work to the website. And when you go into the eShore Flex website, you can't call them. It's online or nothing. So you can only get the prices through the comparison site quotes and it takes you to the website but the links are broken nothing works so the eShore Flex didn't load the next best one firstly the next best one was Sheila's Wheels who I've been with before went onto their site and again no phone numbers only gives you the quote that was on the on the comparison site you can't redo anything and um, there's no way of phoning anybody. <laughs> I 
and on Money Supermarket site, the link is also broken. Money Supermarket just did not work for me today. Ridiculous. So back to compare the market. And Eshaw was so showing the best quote. It was showing a quote of, now my original Eshaw quote when I was going through the comparison sites was 311 and now it's gone up to 313. So I'm still saving about 70 pounds. And that's the one I ended up going with. I was going to, on principle, not re reinsure with Eshaw, but some of the other quotes were ridiculous. Uh, like Churchill was doing a good one. Um, link broken, can't get it to work. So I went into the website and the quote was like 300 pounds more. It was like double the price of my Eshaw quote. And I just got fed up going around websites just to save a tenner. I could not be bothered in the end. I just, who cares? So I've paid £313.60 and pence for my insurance this year. That's fully comp. I'm covered for everything. Bloody, bloody, blah, blah. The only thing I don't have is things like breakdown cover because I get my breakdown cheaper with those little individual sites so I've been with emergency assist for a while I've used auto aid in the past I think I've also been with green flag so we'll see what horrendous renewal prices they all come up with this year and that won't be due until I think it's the end of March for me so I'll worry about that when it happens and if it ends up being really expensive then I might go back to eShore and see if they can tag the breakdown cover on because they were offering it for about 65 but I paid about, I think, about 50 quid for my breakdown cover last year. The annoying thing is, all these things keep going up in price, and yet I never use them. So I've got 16 years of no claims on my car insurance. And I've been driving for 29 years, and yet my insurance goes up, and it goes up, and it goes up. I've had the same car for 12 years. You know, I've never had an accident. I've never had a claim. Um... I've never even got them to, to cover me for a, wind, a, a windscreen breakage. I've always gone to private companies so I don't upset my insurance. And it's just ridiculous because I don't know what I'm paying for. I don't know what I'm getting this year that is different from last year. It's not like I have my own member of staff at Eshaw looking after me each year. It's just an absolute scam because I don't even use the insurance. And I know that there are some, they're trying to bring out some different insurance companies, like ones that are good for people who don't drive very often. So my car mileage is down to 4,000 miles a year now. I never use my car for anything, purely because the petrol has been so expensive. And when prices really went up a couple of years ago, I just got used to uh, pretty much walking anywhere. So I use it for one cleaning job and going to my parents four times a year. And then I'll do a couple of car camping trips. But it's still, you know, my, my parents only, the quota for them is only about 2,000 miles a year. Because it's 500 round miles and I only do it four times a year. So that leaves me with a lot of mileage that I'm just not using. So dropping my mileage has also really helped. So it's worth checking your mileage because that can make an enormous difference. Um... So it's just been an absolute blooming nightmare this year. I've never had so much trouble getting car insurance. It used to be so easy. But so many of these websites, everything is on web chat now. You can't speak to a person. And it's like they're terrified of us. They don't want to talk to us. And it makes it really difficult to tailor your quote because it's what's on the screen. If it's not on the screen, you can't have it. Or you can't discuss it. So a lot of the... A lot of the... Um, the quotes that I was getting were giving me European cover a standard for driving abroad. I'm never going to drive abroad. Why can't I take that off? It's just incredibly irritating. You don't really get what you pay for. But I was saying, yeah, there are these, some of these insurance companies now are trying to do a, a like a insure, insure you per drive kind of thing. And it probably doesn't work so well if you're parked on a public street or in a a car park where your car might get dinged or might get nicked but for the sake you you can get basic cover for those things and then you just pay per your mileage for actually physically driving um, but I don't know how widely available that is saving a car having not having a car would only save me 300 pounds and probably cost me an absolute fortune then in either car, either car hire 
or trains. Trains is not practical. I've got no train stations anywhere near me. Getting to the nearest city for that is um, a 20 minute drive on its own. And given the amount of stuff that I always take or come back with when I go to my parents, it would be impossible on a train. It would just be absolutely awful. So that doesn't work. So I need to have the car and then of course the car camping trips because I don't go on holiday um, and it would end up costing me a load more. So, a car I still have, and I like the freedom that comes from having a car. But anyway, so I think that is the end of my financial roundup for this month. It's short because I've only put in the things that are different. And I think that's probably quite enough, to be honest with you. It's just been really frustrating. They, it, I feel like they've deliberately made the system more difficult. Because it used to be that you could call people. You can't call people now. They've probably laid off loads of staff. The web chats are kind of okay. But I'm not entirely convinced I was actually speaking to a person on mine. Because a lot of what she was saying just came out like copy and paste paragraphs. So I'm not convinced I was actually speaking to a human being. Anyway, so that's the end of that. Insurance is now done for another year. Um, I've saved myself just over £70. So it's not all bad. <laughs> anyway, it's turned really cold here. Right, I'm going to go and uh, upload and edit the last of this footage so I can get this out on the 1st of February, which is tomorrow. So when you see this, it'll be the 1st of February. So I'm just going to end this by saying, Happy February. Where the hell did January go? And onwards and upwards. Speak to you soon. Bye.